Day, the day he crushed the Minnesota Vikings in the Super Bowl 32 to 14. He's a different looking man now, older, even more experienced, and he's leading the Houston Oilers. Love your blue is his motto. He led the Houston Oilers a week ago against the Steelers. Though his team lost, he was very good indeed, going to the likes of Johnson. But now he's got that man as a weapon, a weapon he never had in Oakland. Earl Campbell, number 34, and how he will use him. But tonight, the pair of them must be the team that always gives them fits. The Browns with Brian Seif and Ozzie Newsom and Dave Logan. Tonight, the Browns against the Oilers. atmosphere for the Houston Oilers and the Cleveland Browns. This is Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith and this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Light Beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Chevy Trucks and your Chevrolet dealer. New 81 Chevy Trucks. An important step ahead. The scene speaks for itself where it all began. Monday night football fever. September 21st. 11th year, a city battling back and come to life because of Monday night football. And a quick word about the two coaches, the Brooklyn connection, Sam Rotigliano took over in 78, came after the great disciplinarian, the former Lombardi disciple, Boris Gregg, he makes the game fun for the players, and the opposing coach, the man who brings back Will Rogers, so folksy. Yet so crafty, so shrewd, so calculating, knows exactly what he's doing, and boy, he can coach. Now, for more on the Browns, the Giffer. Howard, like Houston, Cleveland is coming off a big loss, a major loss to New England. They have got to get it together. Defensively, they are sucking a great deal, and we know that Earl Campbell is the best rushing back in all of football. They have a great quarterback. If he can get control of the game early, they will have a chance in this contest. Brian Seid. Steve Grogan in New England last year with 28 touchdowns. You see it right there. And behind only one passer in the league in yards game. He has a rookie in there tonight. You know him. Heisman Award winner, Charlie White. In the Rose Bowl, he carried the ball 39 times. Last week, he carried it four times. And about 250 yards difference in yardage. Let's go over to Don. Well, there's a little bit of difference, all right? This fellow right here, Kenny Stabler, is the guy they brought in. They want a very consistent, precise passer. However, last week, he threw for 43 times. And all last year... Dan Pat's really the most he ever threw for was 33. Last week also, this young fellow who set all the rushing records for Houston, Earl Campbell only carried the ball 13 times. He's averaged 22 times carrying it in his career. However, against Cleveland, he's only played him three times. He's only gained 108 yards as his top one. That's not bad. I say only. The other two times, 71 and 76. I think we'll see this guy carry the ball a lot tonight. I believe indeed we will, because certainly he's one of the greatest to ever come into the game, Earl Campbell. The Oilers will be kicking off, and we'll see Tony Fritz kicking for Houston. And a little man will drop deep for the Cleveland Browns. He wears number 26, his name, Dino Hall. He's 5'7", 165 pounds. And he'll move back and station himself somewhere around the goal line. Fritz, not a long kicker, but he kicks it high. Keith Wright is back there alongside. Keith Wright, of course, a brilliant return man a year ago until he suffered an injury. We're set to go. You can feel the excitement and electricity in Cleveland Municipal State. It high, kicks it short. It'll be Dino Hall at his 10-yard line. And Dino up in it as he crawls out over the 25-yard line. It will be Cleveland. First and 10, Brian Seif. We told you about him. It gets the quarterback. He has time to throw the ball. Charles so White is in there. They would like a great group. He's still recovering from the injury. But you do see Mike Brooke over 1,000 yards a year ago. The most dangerous receiver, Ozzie Newsom, the third-year man from Alabama. Dave Logan, a gifted athlete out on the flank. But Dave Logan suffering from the floor. Football. Now, the most 
Persia man is Reggie Rucker. Toss goes to Mike Pruitt. Mike Pruitt spins and gets out close to the 38-yard line to the 29-yard line. Again, a three and a second and seven defensively. We'll see mostly the three, four tonight. They will jump into a four, three, the veteran in the middle, Curly Colt. The linebackers, a strong, hard-hitting group led by Brazil and Bingham. In the secondary, the man who led the entire NFL in interceptions a year ago, Mike Reinfeld, anchors that group, but watch from the 32, Vernon Perry. Came from Canada a year ago and was superb in the playoffs, you remember. Four interceptions against San Diego in the playoffs. Second down and seven. And off is Pruitt again. Big opening. Oh, yeah. Pruitt has the first down out to the 35, the 37. Up into there by J.C. Wilson. And this is what the Browns must do. They must control the ball tonight and keep that Houston offense off the field. And it is what the Browns can do. The loss to New England, while New England was hot that day, was deceptive. The Browns can move the ball against anyone. They gave the Steelers fits a year ago, and Houston, too. First and 10, Logan, 85, Rucker, 33, wide receivers, both to the left, side to the air. Fires over the middle. Pruitt has the ball, out of the 45. Short of a first down by about a yard, a pickup of nine, it'll be second and one, upended there by Greg Bingham. He got that pass off, Big Elvin Bethay was back there and really gave Seif a good shot. Seif had a good set, good quick set, over the middle, picked them apart. Their offense has been good for a long time, their defense, Cleveland's defense is what's been suspect. When you played, they used to bend, but not break. And they now show a tendency to break. <laughs> They'll break a little. A few cheeks in the armor. Week, they lost 34 to 17 to New England did the Cleveland Browns. Second down, a long yard. The ball just short of the 46. Get it called Mike Pruitt. He'll be the workhorse and Pruitt powering to the 45-yard line of the Houston Oilers. First down, plenty more yardage. And I'll tell you, Mike Pruitt came into his own last year when his running mate, Greg Pruitt, was injured in the fifth game. He was over a thousand yard rusher a year ago, and he's a good receiver. You watch that Cleveland offensive line. That'll be telltale in this contest, Don, as you know. Because if De Leon can contain Culp, the 34 defense designed to defense the run may not be able to do so. Frank, Rucker goes right. Logan is out left. Loose in the tight end. You see him there, number 82. This is Charles White, his first attempt. Highs for the war center a year ago. Upended, crawl forward, down to the 43-yard line. Again, a couple of Second down and eight, up into by J.C. Wilson. It's kind of funny. Charles White, the last time he carried the ball collegiately, he carried it 39 times, gave 247 yards. He carried it two times, or four times, last week against New England game two. It's a little differently. It was not a happy augury, but it's much too soon to count him out as we look at Will Rogers reincarnate. Will Rogers, you say, huh? Looks like Bum Phillips playing. <laughs> he keeps the game in perspective. He enjoys it. Pump it up and go out on the field and let's play, says Bum Phillips. Second down and eight from the 42-yard line of the Houston Oilers. Flat trying to get the screen off. He does the Newsom. And defensively, oh, yeah. a good play by Vernon Perry. They told you about him. He came in a year ago as a Canadian fugitive, if you will, as a free agent. He was absolutely superb that secondary. Four intercepts in the playoff game against San Diego, perhaps the most consequential figure in a game that Houston Oilers had to play without Kemp and without Pastorini. And yet they beat the Chargers and Perry was clearly the MVP of the game in the minds of most people in this country. Good luck aside as he has the obvious passing down, third down and nine. One of the question marks, their kickoff. Brazil. Calvin Hill is a guy that's an amazing athlete that he came in as the number one pick for Dallas back in Yale, but Brazil was right over him all the way. Didn't have a shot at it. Good defensive cover. Out comes Johnny Evans on fourth down for the Cleveland Browns. Dropping deep is Kyle Rocha, number 85. Rookie free agent out of Texas A&M. He's a little guy, too. There's Kyle Rocha. He says, I'm not little, I'm just short. <laughs> he's short in the occupation he's in. He's 5 foot, 870 pounds. Catch from the eight-yard line. Roach is still in his feet. Paddling out to the 20-yard line, and nailed there, driven back to the 19, where Houston was.
will take over first and ten. Let's meet their offense. We told you about Kenny Stabler, the cool old cat. He will take over when Houston comes out with their first offensive set, and they'll begin at their own 19-yard line. 19-yard line, the question mark. The Cleveland Brown defense, their best defensive lineman is out of there tonight, Jerry Shirk. He's being replaced by number 90, Marshall Harris. We'll talk about that later. First and ten, the Oilers. for the Browns. Number 56 was in there. That's R.L. Jackson. And let's beat the office. Stabler, quarterback, of course. Campbell with over 3,100 yards in his first two years. And only carried the ball 13 times last week against Pittsburgh. And, of course, Ken Burrow is missing. If you look at the offensive line, but out of the point, Billy Johnson has replaced him. Coming off knee surgery. And Mike Barber, the big competitive tight end, number 86. You saw the offensive line. There was a loss of a yard. Played by Jackson, reading it perfectly. Campbell gets the call again. Then at the line of scrimmage once again, tries to get outside. And down at the 20-yard line, Tom Garden came up there to make the stop, along with Clarence Scott. But it was the defensive surge over the left side by Marshall Harris to turn Campbell to the outside. You saw R.L. Jackson, number 56, make the first tackle. Early. He'll be following Campbell all night. Look, look at that, Campbell. I've never seen him hurt. I don't think he's getting up very slowly over there. I right. think he's yeah. lost the contact limbs. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone is looking around for it. Earl says, wait a minute, I could see a moment ago. And while the search goes on, let's meet the defense because it is a problem for the Browns. They've had trouble. There they are. And this is what we'll see when they're in their 3 4. Of course, the familiar names, Lyle Alcedo. There are their linebackers. On the outside, their linebackers are questionable. Yeah, Against Dick Ambrose the is good there in the middle, though, Frank. Secondary. You see Tom Darden. He's been around for a while. 40 career interceptions of free safety. He roams the outfield. Last week, Houston used a one-back offense with two tight ends. Don told you right at the top of the show what's going to happen tonight. Campbell will have many more carries. Either that or he lost the two. Earl Campbell. Third down and ten. <laughs> There's that single back. Rob Carpenter comes in. Number 26 for Campbell. This is Billy White to Johnson in motion. Houston will punch. They look pretty ragged that first series of downs. Not that really worked too well for them. I'll tell you, remember a year ago, Dallas came in here. We thought Cleveland had no shot. When Dallas left, they left on the short end of a 26 to 7. And it was a fired up bunch of brownies. And that's the way they are tonight. This, as I said at the top of the telecast, means a lot to this city. It's been a city in distress. And now they're fighting back. And somehow this franchise gives them pride. You saw Cliff Parsley. He will punt for Houston. Deep as Keith Wright on his own 40-yard line. Parsley, high, short. Wright has an opportunity at the 47. And he swarmed under at midfield, hustling down there with Jeff Grove for the Houston Oilers. So out comes the Brownies offense. They'll have good field position. Right at midfield, 34-yard punt by Parsley. The Brooklyn connection, Lyle Alzado from Brooklyn, along with Sam Reticliano, the coach, Sheepshead Bay, and of course the owner, Arthur Modell. Yep. Yes. On defense, Earl Campbell, we are told, lost the ball too. <laughs> Good news to Bum Phillips. <laughs> Cleveland with the ball, just short of midfield, first and ten, their second possession. Came. That was actually our stringer, Ted Washington, came in. The ball's a little bit low. Good position out there by J.C. Williams. Almost tipped it up. One of his teammates could have caught it. Adams comes in, number 80, for the Cleveland Browns. Put out to the right. Second-year man out of Houston. Second down and 10. Inside handoff. Goes to Mike Pruitt. And Mike Pruitt, who has been making 
16 yard, he's up through the middle, picks up another quick six yard, down to the 43 yard line of the Houston Oilers, it'll be third down and four. Mike Pruitt, number one draft pick in 1976, really played in the shadow of Greg Pruitt, until Greg Pruitt went down a year ago with an injury, and then Mike Pruitt took on the load, had over a thousand yards rushing a year ago. Mike Pruitt, of course, still on the sidelines. Probably will not see extensive action for still another couple of weeks. Third down, long three. Calvin Hill is in there, number 35. He's a fine receiver. Calvin Hill is open over the middle. Has the first down at the 35-yard line. Up into there defensively by Carter Hartwig, number 36, who comes in as a fifth man in the other defense. I think few men know Calvin Hill better than you, John, from old of letting him go. They just couldn't. The man's too intelligent, means too much to a team, and in situations like that one, as Frank has pointed out, becomes uniquely valuable still. From what I understand from the coaching staff, too, Aaron, he has uh, set himself up as a kind of example for the younger players. And he, nobody outworks him, so he, that, that keeps, him, keeps him young, as they say. He's still out there working. Good defensive play. Mike Pruitt met at the line of scrimmage at the 35 by Andy Doris. Defensive left end and Ted Watson. against Pittsburgh. He was injured. They brought in Washington, and Washington had a superb game. I think one of the things, frankly, you, you see Curly Cup, who's been around 13 years, his 13th season, there in the middle, on that, particularly on that 3-4 defense that they have. A couple of times tonight, they've set their strongest plays right there at it. They're going to check Curly out, I think, pretty early. What, what year does the guy finally slow down? They're now into the fourth three, so he's not over the head of the center. They bring in Stenrud on second down and ten. from the right cornerback spot. Now that's the guy I love, Frank. Perry is now recognized. Reinfeldt led in interceptions. But to me, Stemrick is the unsung one in the Houston secondary. He just showed you the one-on-one -on -one you know, tackler he is. So true. And Mel Blount with Pittsburgh. You don't hear that much about him because they stay away from him. They stay away from Stemrick. Louis Ryan of Denver. They're great all pros, but they don't get much business over there. And They're Mike Haynes, if he ever comes back with New England. Emmerich is a guy who was in the World Football League of Chicago and Houston got as a free agent. So somebody's keeping their head up. Off to two. It'll be third down and 12. Sight to the air. No blitz by Houston. He's got somebody wide, wide open. Wide open is Rucker and almost picks off. But that pass poorly thrown or Rucker would have had a first down around the 10. He really had him. He really had him early too, Frank. The ball was just not thrown far enough and not thrown quick enough. You see he's got pretty good time there too. Brian just set up. Oh, he was really open. Yeah, he really was. Johnny Evans comes in to do the putting. Brian, when I said earlier that Cockroft, the field goal kicker for the Cleveland Browns, was questionable tonight because of a sprained back muscle, which occurred yesterday. Carl Roach, this is deep for Houston. He probably won't see it. it into the end zone. That'll bring it out to the 20. There will be a net gain of 15 yards on that punt following the touchback. And there is Wilson who broke up that last pass that would have given Cleveland great field position. Ken Stabler comes back out on the field. Earl Campbell is there. Probably sends one false two. We saw the score of the first game we ever had here in 1970. Oilers have the ball. So no score in this game. 544 remaining in the first quarter. on his own after the that was Tim Wilson rather the fourth year man out of Maryland who carries the ball occasionally and just to keep him honest Frank we just flashed the score of the first game ever played here and has a really lovely touch and you know he came in to greet us tonight before the game started the coach of the Jets at that time the very great Weeb Eubank and how well he remembers it Dandy yeah you told him not to go for too far away too did you stay close <laughs>
the NFL charities in his own name and that of Lamar Lundy, both of them suffering from a muscular disease called myasthenia gravis. And, and Weeb is giving so much of his time and his life to it, doing a superb job. You want a coach to win a big game? Hire Weeb Eubank. Houston moves it out to the 35 for a first down. to get another five yards. It'll be second down and five. The key words in what Frank just said, following Tim Wilson, because Wilson is to Campbell what Jim Braxton used to be to O.J. Simpson, except that Wilson does it better. A great lead blocker. And he's, got, he's a, a good receiver, too. That's what Excellent. they use him for, too. On the outside, he'll, as we saw right there, a little quick screen. That was a well-set-up screen, as a matter of fact. Kind of a deceiving one. We're speaking of Tim Wilson. And there's Charlie White on the bench. He gets lonely over there. Yeah, we'll get it later, Charlie. <laughs> the thing that you want to, though, you see a Tim Wilson out there, and you want to say, boy, cut up field. He doesn't really have the speed of Earl or those other guys, and he was going to the outside. Just cut up field. Give me two more yards. Let's go back. Could have made a first down. Short yardage offense. Now for the Houston Oilers. Three setbacks. Rob Carpenter comes in. Lined up with Campbell, 34. Wilson, 45. Carpenter, 26. But this is Campbell. The first down. Stop short of the 45-yard line. Houston will have to try to end. Houston defensively playing inspired football tonight with 2.53 remaining here in the first quarter and no score. Well, they really are, particularly against the run. I believe, Frank, you gave me this statistic before the game. Last year, the Browns were 27th in the league in defense against the rush. So you would expect that a team that like Houston, who has lived with the rush for the last few years, to really eat this thing up so far they haven't done that. Cliff Parsley will punt. Keith Wright, his position for Cleveland at the 15-yard line. Keith Wright, who came up last year as a fifth-round draft pick, was sensational until he was injured in the fifth game. Injured reserve for the rest of the season. Think, Frank, they wanted to get rid of him. They tried to. They had no takers. Now he's got the job back. He's been kicking very well. Uh, mix up somewhere. 
when Pruitt came out of the backfield, there was no linebacker there to check him. I would imagine these guys, they have not played that much 4-3 defense. They've been primarily a three, offense, three defensive linemen down, the four linebackers in the back. So maybe they're not as used to covering those guys coming out of the backfield. Interesting scenario going down right below our booth. Brian Sight, or rather Cockroft, the field goal kicker, is practicing. He has that sore back we told you about. Meanwhile, on the field, first down and 10. 45 yards climb the water. Charles Wyatt and White gets out of trouble. It could have been a big loss, but he picks up a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be second down and eight. And there's Cockroft. Strained the muscle yesterday in a workout. One of the most consistent guys at his grade in the league. And without him, Cleveland seriously hurt. Robert Evans would have to do the kicking. To hit the thousand yard mark. He's been around a while for the Browns, and as Howard said, very consistent. Always up there with the percentage leaders. Second down nine. The ball at the 44 yard line of the order. 103 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Play action. Sykes complete. Goes out to Logan. He has the first down at the 33 yard line. Dave Logan, a gifted athlete. Not great speed, but he has the moves. He'll battle for the ball, and he comes up with the count. Dandy, that's an athlete. We've watched him through the years. Yeah. He doesn't have the speed, as Frank said, but he has superb hands. And he has a kind of maneuverability, the ability to be where the ball is and to avoid the defender. They call him Gary Collins with speed. That's right. <laughs> he is faster than Gary. <laughs> Gary wore 86, not 85. <laughs> On first and 10. intended again for Logan and all over Logan was Wilson. There's a flag way downfield Frank back in the secondary either offensive or defensive pass interference I'm sure all around the 10 yard line. It's going to go against Houston. Illegal contact number 32 defense first down. Vernon Curry the guilty Oiler the first down will be at the 29 yard line of the Oilers. Nice throw. 
sight, put it right where he wanted, right in his right pocket. I must say, J.C. Wilson made the tackle, and in the relatively brief span of time that this game has been played thus far, Wilson has been everywhere, looking very good. First down, goal to go. Dive, what's the crowd to quiet? White comes in, 25, is in there with Mike Pruitt, 43. Hill was wide open, touchdown. 85,000 people standing as one. This place goes crazy on Monday night, and Calvin Hill is restoring Bula Boo. Bula Boo. And he was wide open. If anything, it was uh, Greg Beenham, Brigham's man on the outside, 54. And he was just so wide open. That's also a good way to throw 28 to 30 touchdown passes a year. Don Cockroft, we told you about the troubles back. The holder is McDonald, former SC quarterback of a year ago. He made a white, no problem, seven points. 13-41 remaining here in the second quarter, and Cleveland has struck first. You see Bingham, number 54, trying to come outside. He just really couldn't get out there. Calvin had a wide split way out in front. You never know for sure what defensive coverage they have on, but if it was the one where the linebacker goes out there, then they had it beat. And the Browns made it look so easy. That's the scoring drive. On first down, sight to the air, to Calvin Hill, touchdown. Don Cockroft will kick off. Carl Roach is deep, number 85, along with Jeff Grote, the man they'd like to see get the ball, is the little man, Roaches, a free agent from Texas A&M. The fifth will be, this is him, Carl Roaches. And that's why they like to have Roaches get the football. And it was tackled by the kicker. Yeah, he had bad back at all. <laughs> He's funny. He came up to me in the hotel lobby today. He said, Mr. Cosell, you don't know me, and I'm a very little fellow. But I'll be in there tonight, and you're going to be surprised. <laughs> well, are you surprised? Yes, after that. <laughs> Roaches rolls it out to close to the 36-yard line. Out comes the Oiler offense. They have not been impressive tonight, but they have been in deep trouble. Each, on each occasion, they've had possession. Rob Carpenter, number 26, now is in there with Earl Campbell, number 34. Play action by Stabler. his head down and bowls out to the 43 yard line close to the 44 it'll be second down and two you're going to see more and more of Stabler throwing to Campbell this year and it relates to Campbell's training program in the off season Don why don't you tell him about it? well there's a guy no you were actually telling me but we'll discuss it but Tom Williams is a guy that was with Houston Oilers it's taking me too long to tell this story we'll have to get it in a minute we'll get it ready. later yeah it's a good story I like it through the whole bunch of passes he's learned how to catch the ball on second and two Campbell the call first down but not the big yard as you expect from Earl as he comes out close to the 43 yard line the Giants one and one of the season against the high flying birds and we'll be there in Philadelphia next Monday night LTU Dick Vermeil. what a coach and what a job he's done they sure off a good start aren't they oh unbelievable they have blown them away what was it Denver and then who did they beat yesterday who Philadelphia oh they got Minnesota who murdered them yeah they got them pretty good first and ten 43 yard line of the Houston Oilers play action by Saber under pressure dumps it off screen and it goes to Carpenter Carpenter piled up right at the line of scrimmage, driven back, and Stabler got popped with a play Matthews sliding out there defensively along with R.L. Jackson. Robert L. He's, he's ready, isn't he? Robert L. says, he is hey, fired up. You come in my area, I'm going to touch you. I guarantee you, he'll get him. He's been primed for this one. <laughs> he got off to a most difficult situation. Yeah, one as the number one draft choice. Broke a leg. We were here in the Hall of Fame. Bad Remember knee. Howard That's when he right. did it that weekend, 1977, as a rookie. Bad knee, surgery, terrible situation. Second down nine. Barber. Barber fighting, trying to get to the first down. He'll be short by about a yard. It'll be third and one. Lawrence Johnson defensively there for Cleveland. Don, there is simply no better quarterback, is there, for 
possession and control. The short yardage game. Gilman taught it to Davis. Davis always used it. Basically the 14, 17 yard range. And Stable of a master execute. Now, Kitty's just done so many wonderful things in his career with that kind of pass. But I, I do think that he, probably more than anybody else, has been able to control the ball with the pass. Everybody says he control it with the run. Kitty was able to do it with the pass for a number of years out in Oakland. They're trying to get him to do that here in, in Houston. On third and short, naturally, Campbell regains the foul. Uh, Gets yeah. the first down at the 40-yard line. That's the kind of run, Frank, that you know very well. There's not more than a handful of backs in the league that can make a uh, first down on that kind of situation. He stumbled back in the backfield, kept his balance, still was able to pick up the three or four yards. The story that we're talking about is that Earl has been criticized for not being able to catch the ball. And it's a good point that hand-eye coordination, Earl's not played a lot of other games, tennis or golf or that sort of stuff, so the hand-eye coordination is not too good. Tom Wilson, uh, Williams, as a matter of fact, has a little area outside of Houston where he's been throwing about 2,000 balls this offseason, trying to teach him to catch the ball. On first and ten, Carpenter. Carpenter turns the corner, gets up close to another Houston first down, down around the 32-yard line. It's hard to teach him how to run, you know what I mean? You just kind of grow up and Yeah, but even, that. even there, and you told the story exactly right, Don, even there, what Williams did, and this is why White Shoes Johnson has come back so effectively from those knee surgeries that he's had. It is a hilly area there, and he has them running up and down that hill in the manner that Paul Horning used to run the steps at Green Bay. And it's helped Earl a great deal in his conditioning and even in his running. What are you guys talking about? Well, we got it worked out over here. <laughs> We've got it worked out. On second and four, Carpenter gets the call. Yeah. Nice there. Defensively, number 91, Elvis Frank sliding out there short of a first down. It'll be third down and two. Baseball scores relating to the National League pennant races. Look at what that hot Atlanta team's doing to the Dodgers. Cincinnati trying to get back in it, probably too little too late, but Houston ahead. Houston, an incredible story in baseball because they've held together despite the loss situation. They marked the ball at the 33, so it's third down and three. Stabler at Oakland would have thrown the ball. He has Campbell here. Let's see if he'll run it. He gives us a Campbell. He gets the first down, and Campbell carrying Tom Garden inside the 15 to the 17. First down, Houston. I wouldn't have to think about that very long at all. Who am I going to give it to on third and two? Earl. Earl. I just said it to It takes the pressure off a quarterback, wouldn't you say, Don, to have that kind of a weapon? I wouldn't know. I, I bet it does. You know what Kenny said? He said, the end we won the Super Bowl. If I had had Campbell, we would have won every game by 30 points. I never had the Campbell then, Don. That's another one of those ifs and buts stories they're talking about. Yeah. Well, no one has ever had a Campbell before he arrived a couple years ago. There was only one. There he is out of Tyler, Texas. He's special. 23-yard line. First down, Houston. They're down by seven. Bob Carpenter gets the call. Gets to the 20-yard line. A gain of two and a half, three yards. It'll be second down at eight. By the way, just to finalize the story of Tom Williams, he used to be a key personnel man with the Oilers. Had been for many years. Left the Oilers, now has that place in the bayou that you talked about. And I'll tell you, while he was with the Oilers, he was responsible for people like Charlie Joyner because he had come from Grambling College, Williams said. He was a heck of a personnel man. Hit play of the drive coming up, second down and eight. Stabler. Barber. And Barber hit by Bolton. Short of the first down at the 15-yard line. Put together a pretty good drive here this time. Next up, that, the pass and the run. Kenny hasn't gone really deep. He's going into that first down area for the passes to Barber. Earl. Notice they've been using the two-back offense tonight, Dandy. Yeah, they were uh, criticized about that quite a bit last week in Pittsburgh. Even some of the Pittsburgh players suggested that it was not as difficult for defense as the two backs, and they only had Earl sitting back there. So, hey, you key on that one running back, and we're ready to go. Well, they stepped it up. They have three backs in now as Wilson comes back in with Carpenter and Campbell. 
Third down. Less than two. Campbell on his own. Look at this. Gets the first down. or very close to it. And what a superb effort. Don't you love to watch him? I really do, but I don't like to see him get up slowly. I hope he's all right. He He'll gets up get slowly. Up. He's like Jimmy Brown in that regard. And we're in the home of Jimmy Brown. Close enough for the measurement. Jimmy used to lie there. You'd think he was dead. He'd get yeah. up. He'd barely get back to his position. Then he'd get the ball, and Gifford would say, no, not again. <laughs> they do not have to measure as Campbell hurdling over. Ron Bolton puts his head down, picks up the first at the 12-yard line. Well, he's down by seven. We have 6.25, and the clock is moving here in the first half. Good hard-hitting football game. Cleveland sending, as they've done so far in the past, but they are playing good defense against the offensive line of the Oilers. This is Campbell. Wilson out in front with a good block. And Campbell, look at this. Oh. Just bouncing off grounds. Now close to the five. Dick Ambrose, and he bounced off of it. Not too many of them do that. Ambrose covers that middle section of that defense pretty well for the Brand. Gain of five. It'll be second down at five. Houston can pick up a first down at the two-yard line. Tim Wilson comes out, and in comes Rob Carpenter. Campbell carried the ball 13 times throughout the game. He's already carried nine thus far today. Stabler threw the ball 43 times a week ago. They lost big to Pittsburgh. Campbell, close line as he gets to the line of scrimmage, does not even get to the line of scrimmage. Taken back. Dave number 59, I believe. Ron Bolton, I think, was the guy that reached in there. Let's take a look. That's number 28 coming around. It's not a face mask. That's just put his arm around his neck and uh, bulldogged off him back down in there. He got some help from the inside. I guess Ambrose comes up in the middle. Charlie Hall and Ambrose both closing down. There is a loss of a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be third down and seven. Again, Houston can pick up a first down at the two-yard line. 4.50, the clock is moving, remaining in the half. Leave on ahead by seven. Three setbacks. Billy Johnson had six points. Oh, that's incomplete. Well, he dropped the ball. It was a special play, you know, that was designed for the Cleveland defense. And Billy took his eyes off it. Forget it. That would have been a, at least a cut, uh, first down. I think he could have scored too, Frank. He uh, started running before he caught the ball. The usual play. I haven't seen that one before. The least he would have made would have been the first down. The very least. Well, if he made that first, maybe it's just a little more effort he'd have scored, because that was about a yard short. So the Cleveland defense, whatever the reason, bent but did not break. The Meredith theorem reigns supreme. Washington. 25-yard field goal. Tony Fritz, holder, Gifford Nielsen. Fritz puts it to the uprights, and Houston is on the score. all over the stadium. It's that kind of a night here. They've been talking about this game everywhere you went around Cleveland today. There was excitement. There's a lot to that sign. They were the Cardiac Kids last year. Fritch kicks for Houston. This will be Keith Wright from his six-yard line. Let him a hole. Let him a hole, but he's upended out at the 28-yard line. So Cleveland will take over. Two long scoring drives. Cleveland using up almost nine minutes on there to get seven. Houston doing the same to get three. They mark it at the 29-yard line. Out comes Brian Seif. Cleveland last year, nine and seven. Of course, the Houston Oilers, 11-5, wild card entry into the playoffs. They beat Denver 13 to seven. They beat San Diego without quarterback Dan Pastorini. And then they lost in the AFC Championship to Pittsburgh. First and 10. for the Houston Oilers was John Porter, a rookie linebacker out of Oklahoma, a fifth-round draft pick. So 
Lucas Parker, number 57, is in there now. Would have been a number one, except for a knee problem he had as a junior at Oklahoma. He's in there now wearing 57. Top of your screen for Houston. Second down and 10. Mike Pruitt. Flag is down and Pruitt's down as he rambles out to the 33-yard line. Open everywhere. He had 
Charles White out in the flat. He was also open, and Pruitt was open. The linebackers didn't pick up either one of them. But you feel lucky when he hits that shoulder pad and bounces off. Greg Pruitt comes in for his first action. Number 34, I told you about him, hurt last week. The young man in the previous four years had over 4,000 yards rushing for the Browns. Knee surgery after the fifth game a year ago. He wears 34, and this is him. Flag is down to Pruitt. Is down after a pickup of three, four yards. Greg Pruitt closely. And number 34. Just a tremendous runner. Slippery, small, but far more powerful than you'd think. Fighting back from surgery. And he's playing cautiously. The Cleveland camp says he's not yet begin to, begun to cut the way he oh, used to. 63. Offense. Risen holding right tackle for the Cleveland Browns. Ten yard penalty be a second down and 20. And so they say he is being at the moment too wary, which is easy to say when it's not your knee that's operating. I think it does take a little playing time just to work that out. You see White's back in there. Second down, 20. Draw play. Charles White. Piled up. Surge is forward. It'll be third down and 18. Heading towards the two-minute warning, and Sipe is already anticipating that. We'll move over and have a talk with the Brownie coaches. And there it is. Those draw plays are good if they work on second down. They didn't work that time, so we'll have to come back in just a minute. The Cleveland defensive unit. They have the ball now. Third down and 18. The ball at their own 35-yard line. Type again with all his receivers in the pattern. This is Mike Pruitt. Stimmerich beats Pruitt. Pruitt bounces off and gets out to the 40-yard line where he's buried by Greg Bingham and some other Oilers. And quickly the Houston Oilers call for timeout. On fourth down, this is Johnny Evans for the Cleveland Browns. Carl Roaches for Houston at his own 20-yard line. There's the little one from Texas A&M. 49. Remaining to be played here in the first half. Evans, nice punt. Drives Roaches back to the 15. Looking for the picket line. And sees nothing, lowers his head and gets out to the 30-yard line. 45-yard punt by Johnny Evans. Houston last the football. They have 137 to work with on the clock. Saber is a master at that. And they have two timeouts. The best at that. Using that clock. On that return by Roaches, John Corkin, number 57, had to make an instant decision. There were two men to be blocked. He elected to block neither. <laughs> <laughs> that was a decision. Oh, huh? <laughs> Kumkachi. This is a chance where Kenny Burrow could be used in this lineup very effectively with his speed to go deep. He's injured, not here tonight. Table. Screen. Carpenter. We're setting up. Carpenter has the first down, gets out over the 40 to the 43. Stabler has already called a play in the huddle. Seconds ticking away. 120 and moving. That'll be a pass, of course. If he has to, he'll throw it into the ground or out of bounds to kill the clock. He goes to Carpenter again. Carpenter will look for the sidelines, and he finds it out near midfield. Stopping the clock with 107 remaining in the half. You're watching an artist at work. I wish you could have seen the Houston Oilers with Stabler during the training season. Bum Phillips was never a believer in the two-minute drill, Frank, believe it or not. But this year, with Stabler, instead of winding up the practices with the wind sprints, Stabler would just take the team for six, eight minutes and run the two-minute drill. And now you're seeing the Oilers in a different manner from when you've seen them before. Quick count by Stabler. Second down and three. Stabler, complete. Billy Johnson has the first down, stops the clock at the 45-yard line. Well, I'm surprised that Bum was not really into that two-minute drill. He never because, was. Yeah, that's, that's surprising because it's such an effective weapon. It seems to me... It, I used to always say, you know, why do the guys start change defenses when they've been holding me all day playing the same ones they have? 
And you get in two minutes, the uh, defense, they start dropping all these people off. I'd love to play a whole game of two-minute drills. That would really be fun. <laughs> 101 now on the clock. Staber still has a pair of timeouts. First down, 45-yard line of the Browns. Now flag fly. Alzado appeared to be offside for Cleveland. Stabler, complete. Renfro, and Renfro's inside the 35 down to the 28-yard line. <laughs> and we'll wait to check the call. It looked like Alzado was offside. He might have been drawn off. He says he is. First down, Mark to James. 54 seconds. Now go. Ball of the 29-yard line. Stabler will have called a couple of plays in the huddle. Puts Johnson out to the left, Renfro out to the right. Wasting time, so he uses one of the timeouts. That's all. Yeah, you haven't been doing anything lately. Billy Johnson took that stable pass down to the 25-yard line. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. 45 seconds remaining in the first half. One timeout remaining for the Oilers. And Cleveland leading Houston 7-3. to three. Both teams lost their opener. Getting harder for the Browns to play a zone coverage down here in this area, so you might get a man to man coverage. In and out. Single setback, Rob Carpenter. There's your man to man. Look out. Saber goes down. Defensively, Ronald Jackson. What a big play. They may be out of Fritz's field goal range now. Well, you can almost sense that man to man coverage coming, which certainly would indicate that there might be a blitz that time. They did send more than one linebacker, and Robert L. was the guy that made it through. First sack of the night. They, after the sack, they stopped the clock. They started it again. There's 30 seconds, and the clock is running. Stabler fires. Short, incomplete. Clock stops at 27 seconds. It'll be fourth down. He had a man open there. Frank Paul was under throne. Uh, Johnson was there. Just didn't get it there. Stapler has completed 12 of 15 for 88 yards. Only three of the 12 completions, more than 10 yards. Interesting situation. It's fourth down and 16. Tony Fritsch is obviously out of his range because they do not send him in. On fourth down, the Oilers come up to the line of scrimmage. 27 seconds remaining in the half. They need 16 for the first. That's short of the first. Cleveland will take over the football at the 25. It was complete to Billy Johnson. Basically the same pattern that was incomplete the play before. Johnson over in that corner. Did not pick up the first down. You're right. And R.L. Jackson stays on the turf, shaken up. And see Jackson come in from the left side. All three of the linebackers in on the action. Looked like he just bent his knee back and left knee. If it's his left knee, he did it himself and hit the ground. Well, I don't think they'll do anything too fancy right now with the 14 seconds to go back at the end of the field. They'll just let this thing go. Earl will go back in. Did he lose a tooth or a contact lens? He lost a tooth. tooth. Lost he had a tooth. false tooth, but he lost. They searched around. I don't know whether he acquired it or not. Yeah, it might just make it go a little bit faster. Really worried about R.L. Jackson. Contact that didn't seem possible that he could have been hurt that much, but apparently he was. Cleveland, the ball at their own 24 yard line. Mike Pruitt gets the call, big opening. Seconds ticking away as Pruitt gets out close to the 40 yard line. Cleveland will let it tick off, and that will be the final play of the first half. Cleveland. Houston, 7-3. Good hard-hitting contact football. Old Sam Tigliano leading his troops in. There he is, Deb Grove. All right, set to go. The Cleveland Browns playing for a sellout crowd. Sold about 85,000 tickets. I don't know who showed up, but there's not an empty seat that I can see. And playing an inspired brand of football tonight. They did a year ago when they defeated the Dallas Cowboys, 26-7. Cleveland in 
good field position. Out close to the 33-yard line. And from this point, we anticipate Stabler, Earl Campbell, and Wilson. Wide receivers for Houston, Renfro, and Billy Johnson.
a cheer you heard was for Cleveland fans who saw Robert Jackson come back out onto the field. Now he's back into the lineup. Hey, if you've ever been hit on the top of the head, you jam that neck down, everything goes numb all over your upper body, and I'm sure that's what happened to Robert Jackson. He's back in the lineup. Tim Wilson. second down and nine. Jeff Earl has carried 13 times, as many times as he carried all last week against Pittsburgh. He's gained 59 yards. He can still get his 100. Oh, he can. He gets those yards, you just can't realize that he's picking them up. He runs the low to the turf. And just when he's going to go down, he squirts for another two or three.
passed up the Cleveland Browns defense at the goal line. Sent Campbell to the left, gave the ball to Wilson. Wilson gets in for the touchdown, and it is Houston 10, Cleveland 7. Set to kick off is Fritz. Deep is Dino Hall. And Keith Wright. This is Keith Wright. He's got the room. And Wright turns the corner out over the 40-yard line. And the 43-yard line of Cleveland comes roaring back. Jeff Grove made the stop for Houston. And Grove has been in on every tackle on a special team tonight. And he's returned the ball once. He's done really well, a good job on special teams. The offense, they had a, enough time to get a little step sitting on the bench watching that Houston offense work. Rich is not kicking the ball far enough, Frank. His ball is not going about the 10 or 15 yard line. He's giving them too much of an advantage. And he's kicking it too low. Sipe the quarterback, number 17. Charles White, 25. Mike threw it, 43 to setback. 33, Dave Logan 85, those are wide receivers, this is Mike Pruitt, hit at the line of scrimmage and moves forward for about a yard, it'll be second down at nine, Mike Pruitt, Bill comes in, in there with Mike Pruitt, second down, long eight, the ball to 45 yard line, in the side, hand off to Pruitt, and Pruitt gets into Euler territory at the 48 yard line, short of the first down by a yard, it'll be third and one, Drake Bingham on the stop, and Cleveland comes right back, good tough run. Accelerate like this. 
it, I don't think anyone has come along with the size and the speed that Earl has. You see, he didn't really make much variance that time. He says, Tom Darden, there you are. And I, you're in my way, so I've got to go ahead and run over you. And there's very few backs that can do that. I think that's what that's the unique thing about Campbell. He's so big and so fast. And he gets New Orleans back in field position, second down and four. They mark it at the 41. Campbell again. Find Wilson. Wilson with another fine block. And Campbell steps out of bounds, but not until he picks up the first down, close to the 48-yard line. If we can get a replay on that, you'll see Tim Wilson doing a very difficult thing. Let's take a look at it. Watch 45. He makes this play go. Even as you speak, Frank, it's amazing what we got here on Monday Night Football. Look at Alzado back in. There's Wilson out in front. And that is a good lead block. That is terrific. Comes back on the outside. And once again, Tom Darden is the guy that's in Earl Campbell's way. He says, this time, Earl, let's just walk out. Let's just get out of bounds. Wilson's been about doing it. that all night, as I said earlier. He is to Campbell what Braxton used to be to Simpson, only does it better. just inches short. No, he has the first down. Inside the 39-yard line, the Houston Oilers working on the clock, which says 5.32, remaining in the third quarter, and working on the Cleveland Browns defense is Kenny Stabler. Sam Ritigliano started his coaching career in high school in Brooklyn, Greenwich, Connecticut. Matter, he, he was a coach of one of our cameramen, Drew LaRosa, up at Greenwich High School. Didn't help our camera La Rosa de Rosa. <laughs> Drew would understand. Yeah, Drew. We've talked it over on many a late night. First and ten. Campbell. And Campbell. Nailed there at the 35-yard line. Held to a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. What was it that Bob Phillips said last year? Finally, Pittsburgh had won again, and it was Pittsburgh that would go to the Super Bowl. This year, next year, he said, we've gotten up to that door, and next year we're going to bust it down. The Houston team has that capacity. Well, they bust it down last week. So that's 31-17.
of that. They're moving the thing back around. Looks like that Robert Jackson is back in there, and he's causing a little love. Uh, Robert doesn't mind talking to you. You know what I mean? Bob, put that hat back on. What is it? Yeah, Bob is really upset. The hat's all right. I the think haircut. they're changing it. I think properly so. Billy Johnson came, had to come way back for it. The contact was not made. Let's see if we can pick it up here. And Johnson was coming back. Now, the idea is his momentum has to be... That's taking him inside the 30. They had to be at the 31 for the first. Yeah, but his He's momentum... He's at the 30 yard back line. there. It, they it's blocked a, it at the point where he was hit. I think it's a good call. Now, Houston has to go for this because Tony Fritz doesn't have the long range. We just talked about this earlier. When you were back there, was it in Brooklyn you played where you would go for that fake end of the line and throw deep? No, I never did. No. I threw a lateral. A lateral. The old Statue of Liberty play. And Howard did not have Campbell. measurement. Campbell now 18 carries, 105 yards, and they've been brutal yards. He's got it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love Bob. Bob says he may not be in a class by himself, but it sure don't take long to call a roll. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a million of them. I love it, yeah. They just barely made it as right, but they made it. A friend of mine, Sam Blair, has written a book on Earl called The Driving Court. Many things about Earl. Look at that. The rest of the team, 18 yards, Earl 105. But there's so many nice stories about Earl and his family and his mom and his brothers and stuff like that. In, in Houston, I mean, in uh, Tyler, they really were good folks, worked hard. Everybody in Tyler liked it. The first down inside the 29 yard line, reverse to Billy Johnson, and he has blockers in front of him. Position to hold the game to about six yards. You talk the flag is down. You talk about a close line tackle. Frank Tom going to go against Houston. 24 offense, first down. Big Leon Gray over the left That's side. The late pro. finals. Cincinnati hanging in there. Both Houston and the Dodgers have lost. They are tied. Cincinnati four and a half behind. No, that's wrong. They have four and a half. They're in the stand. It is wrong. All right, the ball at the 39-yard line. The down remains the same. First down and 21. Stabler. This is Wilson. And Wilson upended at the 32-yard line. Dick Ambrose over there defensively for the Cleveland Browns. It'll be second down and 14. that that the middle part of the defense was very vulnerable. Kenny's got tight end and Mike Barber, and on the other side, you've got Ozzie Houston, maybe one of the top three or four tight ends of the business. I'm surprised that Kenny hasn't gone down the middle any more than he has, and I think Barber's caught a couple. Oops, we see another guy coming off. That has to be Clay Matthews. Clay's a guy to Southern Cal his third year. They were expecting high things from. He is filled in, but maybe not as spectacularly as the Browns had hoped. They bring in Don Good, recently acquired. He can play from San, from San Diego. I was going to mention that from San Diego a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, the Browns have been concerned about their outside cornerbacks. They're the correct standings in the National League. Okay. Second down, 14, 32-yard line of the Cleveland Browns. Frank, I think you made a great point earlier during the timeout. I don't know why they don't use Caster as a wide receiver. Quick count by Saber. He loves it. A lot of time, no one open. This is Wilson. And Wilson dropped for a loss back to the 37-yard line. You guessed it, Robert Jackson. He's turned this crowd on tonight defensively. He has been everywhere. Houston is out of Fritch's field goal range. Stay 
Buffalo must pick up the yardage that can put Fritch within that range on this down or else. Look as if they're going to play in from the sideline, which is slightly unusual for Saber. He usually calls his own plays, but he doesn't like it. He won't use it. <laughs> That's true. Passers, 
seven defense, first down. Lyle Alzado in late on Kenley Stabler. First down, Houston Oilers, 20-yard line. 52 seconds now remaining in the third quarter. And Frank, an absurd penalty committed by Alzado, a veteran, a great player who long ago should have known better. His second one, he was offside earlier, too. That's maybe a right. bigger mistake than roughing the pass. Inside the 20 to the 18, a gain of a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Bitterly fought game, it really is. The Cleveland Browns, who were blown out of the tub, I mean, they were annihilated a week ago by New England, even though the score was 34-17, they got those two touchdowns late in the game. They just weren't in it, and they have come back to battle Houston to 10-7 as we head into the fourth quarter. Second down eight. Huge crowd, 80,000 have shown up tonight. Houston Oilers have the football as we begin the fourth quarter. Third down and one. The ball will be inside the 12-yard line. Houston dominating possession of the football here in the second half. I just saw a sight for the first time in a long time. I wonder if they'll ever get back. indication here as you look at the third quarter stats but he is going to give Tony Prince a shot at it they're about two yards away three yards away which I think is a good call again well, well, lost by Rob Carpenter and Ambrose and Burrell well this is this is really a great break for Cleveland and they've earned it because they'll stay in this ball game with a mere field goal vis-a-vis -a, -vis a touchdown Gifford Nielsen is a quarterback he and Houston extends their lead 13 to 7 over Cleveland so Cleveland stays in it as we begin the fourth quarter we'll be back in a moment Merrill Campbell is on the sidelines on that third and two call Houston could not get the first down they settled for a Tony Fritch field goal they now lead 13 to 7 deep to receive the Fritz's kickoff number 26 Dino Hall Keith Wright. It will be Keith Wright at the 12. Keith Wright again with another nice return. Going out to the 37-yard line where Adger Armstrong recently acquired. Passed off by Dallas a year ago and he made the Oilers football team on their special teams. But instantly, Frank, this Cleveland team has good field position. And what Don said earlier remains true. Fritz's kickoff has been absurdly poor for a profession and give Cleveland the opportunity immediately to get back. At the 37, Calvin Hill is in there with Mike Brooks. The site goes to the air. And it's complete to Reggie Rucker. And Rucker dances down the sidelines, out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Gain of six, it'll be second and four. Mike Reinfeld made the stop for Houston. You know, they're trying to put Reggie Rucker in a back seat as you look at his graphic there. The man has great hands. He has great moves. They're trying to bring in that number two draft choice of a year ago, Willis Adams, to replace him. But there's no way at this stage of Adams' career that he can do the things Rucker with his experience.
that tentative. I don't know really why. They're putting a pretty good rush on him, but uh, really and truly, he's kept Ozzie Newsom in the block most of the night. And I, I think Newsom, along with Logan, are two of the really top receivers in the league right now. Reggie Rucker, of course, as you mentioned, Howard, has had some great years here. Kind of surprised a lot of folks. Didn't think he would make it in the league. He's had a great career. He's got some really good outside receivers. But Ozzie Newsom is a guy that both of you folks, they don't have very many of those. job. He really has. You see a lot of times, you know, they'll throw in that area and we'll talk about a defensive back. A lot of times the offense, their plan was to work over on that side. They don't want to go over to the other side. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not. Whatever, the, whatever their plan was, J.C. has been equal to the task. Here's Johnny Evans and here's Carl Roaches. Roaches at his 13-yard line. Special teams coverage there by the Cleveland Browns hustling down there was Bill Cohen. So we have 13-29 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And when we come back, Houston will have the football at their own 23-yard line. Earl Campbell on the sideline, surprisingly so. He really has not got the action. He is not being treated by any of the trainers, not being administered to, but he does appear from time to time as we look down on the field to be in a little bit of pain. We'd like to report what the problem was, but we just don't know. But he stays out. Rob Carpenter, single set back to the Oilers. First down and 10. The ball at the 22-yard line of the Houston Oilers. Here comes Carpenter. Gets to the inside. Nothing doing there. Goes to the outside. Nothing doing there. Don Good makes a stop. Maybe a loss of a yard. the pattern of the Cleveland Browns as you just looked at Don Good, a first-rate linebacker who in San Diego's plethora of linebackers couldn't survive, but he can play. Cleveland only needs one break, and they're the kind of team off last year that can capitalize. It's now to the 34-yard line, up into there by Oliver Davis. Well, that was a big hole. Yeah, that thing opened up really well over on the left side. And that man can do a lot of things, Don. He is indeed the Preston Pearson of the Houston Oilers. That was Leon Gray and David Carter's side of that Oiler offense, and they opened up a pretty big hole over there. Ripped in there pretty good shape. of his bridge, but I don't see the relevancy to the absence of his presence on the gridiron. <laughs> I'm sure there is a problem. Of course, I'm sure it's not his tooth.
offensively for Cleveland. Good move by Carpenter. It's one of those situations where the uh, screen that you see trying to be set up here, ordinarily these screens are set up to be led to the outside. Carpenter saw a little cut back to the inside. It opened up. And he says, I'm not going to wait on anybody. He was trying to get, <laughs> big Leon Gray was trying to get out in front of him. Rob wouldn't wait. He's like, I can't wait on the Leon. I got to go. I picked up the first down. At the 45-yard line of the Browns. Houston ahead of Cleveland, 13-7 in an AFC Central game. Here comes Carpenter. This time he takes it to the outside and picks up about four. It'll be second down and six. It was Tom Dart defensively for Cleveland on this play. Seems to me, maybe it's just the last two three plays, but Darden has been tackling everybody pretty high. What do you think he does that? He uses to those defensive backs to come in and try to clip them around the knees, but Darden kind of hits them up there around shoulder length. Well, he's concerned about the rules. The rules? The rules. What does that mean? You've got to be careful about hitting a guy low these days. Oh, come on. Come on. Second and six. 72 with Cleveland. Had several knee surgeries, then struck down not too many months ago by a staph infection that hit him in the knee, and he almost died. The rest of the story in a moment. On first down, this is Ronnie Coleman, another big opening up the middle. Inside the 20 goes Coleman. Gain of eight. Now Stable is doing two things. He's eating up the clock. He's using a possession and control offense. And at the same time, he is ripping them apart because the Cleveland defense has been out there a long time this half, and they're afflicted with fatigue. Well, they are. He's also taking advantage of some like Henry Bradley in there at defensive tackles, some young guys in that Cleveland defensive line. They're not used to this. the 21-yard line. Meanwhile, Earl Campbell continues to pace the sidelines. Nothing apparently wrong with him, but he has not been playing much here in the second half at all. Has not been involved in this drive whatsoever. But they are now within Fritch's range gift, and a field goal at this point, with eight minutes left, is as good as a touchdown. There was a loss of three, so it'll be third down and five. The ball at the 21-yard line.
to pity he's got to stay out four weeks, Frank, because he said he thinks he'll be ready to go in two. They said it wasn't as bad as they thought. They had it in cast. They took that off yesterday. I guess it was. Stretched ligaments and says he feels fine. Sam Bertigliano in a tough division, this AFC Central. Oh. Second down and two. towards the goal line. The big man, a 6'3", 220 pounds, gets inside the two. Yeah, they're doing a pretty good job on that left side. I mentioned a moment ago, but the big runs, they've come over to that side. No Wilson has come in. He, has, he doesn't pick up a lot of the yardage. We talked about him as a blocker for this man, Earl. But when Earl's not there... And doing it without Earl. I, I've just got to think Earl is... You know how the Houston fight song goes? Do I know? Yes. Yes, I know. Houston has the oil as the, the greatest football team. Second down to go. Hatcher Armstrong is the third man, number 39, in that three-man offensive back set of the Houston Oilers. Armstrong released by the Cowboys a year ago and recently acquired by Houston. Ball right at the one-yard line. 5.35 remaining in the game, and the clock is ticking. 14th play of this drive coming up. Motion had he fumbled. Boy, does that face register a lot. Sam Rattigliano. Now mark it. That's right at the goal line. Uh, as close as you can get it. And it'll be third down. Meanwhile, the seconds tick away. I saw David Carter, the big right uh, left guard, go out. And Bob Young, number 63, came out. the big man they were unable to get in you saw Kenny walk past Earl he says where were you Earl Tony French is out for the field goal
some real estate coming up for the Cleveland Browns when we come back. That's the story from Cleveland Stadium before 80,000 Cleveland fans. Oilers out on top 16 to 7. Tony Fritz set to kick off. He just hit a chip shot to put the Oilers more than a touchdown away from a Cleveland Brown comeback. Deep for Cleveland, 26 is Dino Hall, Keith Wright, number 89. Set to go, there are the deep men. Fritz dribbles it along the ground. Taken there by Dino Hall, and Dino Hall explodes out to the 30-yard line, where Cleveland needs to make something happen. Brian Sight not having a tremendous night. The Browns will have the ball first and 10 of their own 30-yard line. And a reminder, over the weekend, there is some indication there's a possibility for change in the hostage situation in Iran. Tomorrow, the Iranian parliament is scheduled to begin its long-awaited debate on the hostages. And tonight, immediately following your local news, ABC News Nightline will explore whether there is any movement in the hostage crisis. That's Nightline for most of these ABC stations. with four minutes to go. Well, they need a touchdown and then some, so that's fairly wise at this point. All right, I, if he doesn't use Ozzie Newsom, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> I'll tell you, Ozzie Newsom's a heck of a receiver in that middle. Logan out on one side and Rucker on the other. Brian has not had a great night. On first down. Tight, forced out of the pocket. Has to hurriedly unload it in the general direction of Logan. Stops the clock with 327. It'll be second down and 10. It was Andy Doris, number 69, pressuring sight. Offensively, the Browns have struggled. They struggled through the preseason. And they were completely overwhelmed a week ago by the New England Patriots. Losing there 34-17, but losing even bigger than the score would indicate. Cleveland's offense was true, Frank, but I've got to respect the goal line stand they just put on, and I respect that coach, too. the whole stand. They'll be heard from, and I respect the division they're in. Oh, it's brutal, it really is. Pittsburgh, Houston, Cleveland. Penalty, of course, declined. The first down is inside the 45-yard line of the Oilers. 320 remaining in the game. Have you seen that number tonight in Frank Gall? 12, 14. <laughs> well, I respect you guys for respecting these things. <laughs> Second down and 10. Wise guy. <laughs> Sight has Reggie Rucker, 33. Ozzie Newsom, 82. Dave Logan, 85. Out to the left. Ozzie Newsom now split wide from the side in position. Very top of your screen. Brazil was back there. Wilson went with him. Third and ten. That tells a little bit of the story. Yep. But he has not had that many opportunities as Houston has played solid, slow, ball control football here in the second half. Kenny Stabler football. Third and ten. Newsom again. Split out to the left. 
He attracts Greg Stemmerich defensively out there. Stemmerich moves right up on him. You can see the top of your screen. Movement on the part of the Browns offensive line. Looks like Cody Riser. I believe that's right. right. Rised up. When you're six foot seven, it's hard to hide out there when you jump offside. Another way of telling the story of the second half, Frank, is the fact that Cleveland has only had 11 oh, plays oh, in the man. whole half. Offensive. Is Cody. Seventh round prick. Made the all rookie team a year ago. Became a starter for the Browns after six games as part of the offensive unit that helped Brian Seif to his best year ever. That makes it third down and 15. Bold start moving before the snap. 63. Offense. Third down. 308 on the clock now. Cleveland needs one on this drive. They need something on this play. They try Newsom. Bottom of your screen to the right this time. Rucker and Logan slip to the left. season for some draft picks from the Oakland Raiders comes up with a big play for Houston just really the, the good defensive coverage they were all over him Brian tries to force it in there and sure enough Tatum does have hands where he can catch it so Brian Seip tried to force one in Jack Tatum comes up with his second interception of the season we'll be back in a moment and a seventh round draft pick from Oakland Houston has the football they give it to Ronnie Coleman on the left side and also on the clock. Picks up a couple. It'll be second down and eight. In my book, this will be his last year because he no longer has the coverage that he used to be able to... This is the story of this game. Houston has just kept the football. two yards. It'll be third down and six. Well, if he can finally take the Oilers past the Steelers, the Steelers, of course, have knocked the Oilers out of the AFC Championship the last two years. Well, Stabler might well be nominated. Third down and five for the Oilers. The ball inside their own 45-yard line. 237 remaining to be played in this game. The Browns have one timeout remaining. Stabler will not turn it over. He gives the ball to Coleman. He has the first down. Down the 46-yard line. Kenny Stabler night. We'll be back. To look at many game films, the Cleveland Browns. 40 plays is an unusually low number. First down, Houston, close to the 45. The Cleveland Browns. Wilson gets the call. Hurdles over his line of scrimmage down to the 44. Gain of six and be second and four as we head to the two-minute warning. As you look at this game in perspective, there's a point to be made. And that point is, before we break for a moment, that pro football is now a game of strength. Put aside all your computerization and all the rest. And Houston is a team of strength. They are huge. They are strong. They dominate. We'll be right back. Certainly, the Houston Oilers in solid position of the football. They've had it all night. They have a second down and four. The ball at the 40-yard line to Cleveland Brown. Time running out as Wilson takes it up the middle. The Browns can't be. We will be in Philadelphia next Monday night for the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles against the Cardinals. Meanwhile, the Oilers continue to work on the clock with a commanding 16-7 lead. They give the ball to Ronnie Coleman. It'll be fourth down and short. And we'll remind you again, stay tuned for ABC News Nightline coming your way 30 minutes after this telecast is over at 11.30. Not a lot of yards necessarily. 178, that's a, a good night, but not a great night as far as yardage is concerned, but he did control the ball. Cliff Parsley will punt for Houston. Deep is Keith Wright for the Cleveland Browns. Wright bobbles it, takes it at the five. And didn't get out of it. <laughs> well, they stopped the clock on the change of teams, change of possession. So we have 50 
16 seconds. And the Browns down 16. The Bengals twice. Plus they have to face Seattle, Kansas City, Tampa, Denver, New England, Chicago, the Jets, Green. They play the Bengals twice. They play the Steelers twice. This is a tough division, the AFC Central. Zayt fires to Newsom. There you are, Don. I've been waiting for him to pull the news for a long time. Daddy, he's a good receiver. He they will not get another play off. Oh. He'll not catch another. And that's it. Once again, the final score. Houston defeating Cleveland 16 to 7. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what Finley Skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.